share a, um, a funny story that uh, someone I heard some uh, my friend told me this and uh, one time he was uh, uh, reading Quran and memorizing Quran in a place and he was there and he was in a room uh, close to a mosque and so he said that so he was sitting there and he was reading Quran and uh, and then he felt like this like this uh, he was memorizing and then he had like this tawfiq and he like memorized quickly and and then he's he was so happy and excited that he he felt like God gave him a gift and he was feeling so close to God and he was so excited and he was so excited like you know about God and being close to God and this and so he said Ya Allah show me the angel he was saying show me the angels and before <laughs> Before he finished saying the word angels, he hear, he heard this loud boom <laughs> that he never heard before, although he was in that room for many, many hundreds of hours. And then he said, no, no, Ya Allah, I'm not ready. <laughs> True story. <laughs> True story. So the angels are real, <laughs> but they're hidden for a reason. <laughs> They're hidden, but we see them with the eyes of the heart. Alhamdulillah, we know they're real. When a child falls and their forehead's like a centimeter away from the corner of the table, you're like, who saved them? Like, who saved them? The angels are real, right? Right? And so we're not victims of scientism in this society. Alhamdulillah, you know, the more, the more science progresses, the closer it gets to the sunnah. The more science advances, the closer it gets to the sunnah. Right? That, that's just haq, and there's countless examples. My favorite example, uh, they're, they're just so abundant, but I'll, I'll just share one with you. Uh, that one time, I was, I, there was this journal, medical journal article that came out, on, uh, uh, and it found the result that uh, if, you, if, if a sugary substance is wiped inside the mouth of a newborn baby, it prevents brain damage, especially for premature babies. And if the sugar is given in any other way, that benefit doesn't happen. And so what, do, what have Muslims been doing for 1,500 years? What do they do? Tamar, they take a sweet date, and what do they do with it? They put it in the newborn baby's mouth. After the nurses leave the room, of course. <laughs> Don't do it when the nurses are there. They're going to call child, child, what is it called? They're going to call, yeah, child services. Wait till the nurses leave. Okay, the doctor then then do your thing, do the Muslim thing, right? Okay, so I mean that's science catching up to the Sunnah, right? So Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, we're Muslim. Say Alhamdulillah. Say Alhamdulillah. Say Alhamdulillah. When you say Alhamdulillah, it fills two things. It fills. It encompasses two things. One, it encompasses the whole cosmos, from the heavens to the earth, and two it fills the scales on the Day of Judgment. And, you, and, and it's really interesting. Do you know why it fills the, the cosmos from the heavens to the earth? It fills it all. You know why? Because you know how God says in the Quran, you can't count one blessing? You can't count one blessing? You know how God says that, right? You know why? Because, and I conclude with this last thing, Inshallah, so we can proceed to the Salat al Tasbih prayer. So we can't count one blessing. You know why? So take, for example, one bite of bread. One bite of bread. I want your help. I want you guys to help me. And I want you to think of the blessings that needed to exist so that you can actually have that bite of bread. So, for example, you needed to have teeth. You needed to have a baker, thank you. You needed to have farmers. You needed to have wheat, water, oven, heat. And where did the water come from? Did it come from the rain? Did it come from the clouds? Right? The ocean? Right? And if you keep going, you needed to have the teeth. You needed to have you need to have transportation, an economic system. You need to have 
you need to have um, uh, taste buds. You need to have the digestion. You need to have a tongue. You need to have molar teeth. You need to have salivation, right? You need to have the farm and the farmer. And how about the tractor and the farm? And how about the factory that made the tractor? And how about the, the person who made the tractor? And how about the clothes that the person's wearing who made the tractor? And how about the needle that was used to sew the clothes for the person that was working in the factory that made the tractor that's on the farm? So when you say Alhamdulillah, it includes the clouds, the skies, the oceans, photosynthesis. It includes the chemistry of yeast, the chemistry of yeast, and the macros that exist behind that we don't even see, that make bread into bread. All of those things that we barely understand, that I barely understand in chemistry, right? And then and everything inside your inner universe. And there needs to be an economic system and the person who made the business that made the bag that made the bread that transported it that put it in the, the place that you bought it and how about the gas and how long was the gas made in the world in the earth so that to make so, so that it was used to transport it how long does it take how many how many eras millenniums to make that guess. So that was being generated for you from thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago so that you can enjoy your bite of bread. Because <laughs> that gas that you used in your car or in that train or in that bus or in that, or in that tractor, how long did that gas exist? <laughs> that oil that was used, right? Thousands of years ago. So when you say Alhamdulillah, you can't count one blessing because it encompasses all of these things. And that's why when you say Alhamdulillah, it fills. It fills from the heavens and the earth. And that's why my, one of my favorite hadith in the Shama'il is if you whoever takes a bite of food and, and says Alhamdulillah, Allah is happy with you. It's that easy. Or whoever takes a sip and says, Alhamdulillah, Allah is happy with you. It's that simple. Just don't give credit to yourself. <laughs> I made this bread. I'm the best baker in the world. Let me Instagram it. <laughs> right? Give credit to God. Right? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. May Allah accept, inshallah. May Allah accept, may Allah accept, may Allah accept. Alhamdulillah, this gathering is so magnificent, so gorgeous, so beautiful. Thank you to MCC, and thank you to our Prophet Muhammad wasallam, and thank you to our teachers and scholars that inspired us to be here, and to our parents and everyone, and their chains of all the people that carried Islam so we can be here, those that sacrificed. Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal protected this religion a thousand years ago. A thousand years ago, he protected the aqidah, the creed of this ummah, when he was being tortured. And, and if he said one word, all the scholars would have followed him. But then when he came out from that torture, they asked him a question. They said, oh, Imam Ahmed, what do you say about those people that tortured you? Do you know what he said? He said, He said, what do you think about those people that tortured you, O oh, Imam Ahmed? He said, oh, they were doing it for the sake of Allah. <laughs> they thought I was wrong. So they were doing it for the sake of Allah. How can I be mad at them? How can I seek revenge from them? <laughs> they say the sign of a wali, the sign of a saint, of a friend of God, is they have husn al-dhan bi'ibadillah. Husnul dhan bi ibadillah. They have good assumptions, good opinions of other people. Right? So even these people that tortured him, he said, they were doing it for the sake of God. And we can't get along with our wife or husband for one night, <laughs> for one day. Why'd you say that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Why, why, why'd you say that? What did you mean by that? Husnul dhan. Husnul dhan. And these are our scholars. These are our scholars for thousands of years, and they exist today, the inheritors of the Prophet. May Allah protect them.